All right, I am currently hiking up Wind Mountain here in the Columbia River Gorge. It's about 900 feet of hiking up just a little over a mile of trail. So in other words, perfect for QRO activation. Since it's short, you know, I can carry my 100 watt radio and 12 amp per hour battery up here without any issue. I'm gonna make an argument that maybe you should consider doing more HF activations with the FT891. It's a relatively compact small radio. If you were thinking of getting an external amp for your 705 or your QR, other QRP rig, the, ra the whole radio itself actually costs less than a decent external amp, and by the time you add it up, the whole package ends up being lighter. The FT891 by itself is lighter than a QRP rig plus an amp. Just because you're doing summits doesn't mean you have to do QRP. All right, here's what I got going for an antenna setup. So I haven't gotten on the air yet, but I'm already glad. I brought the NFED half wave. I love these kite winders because they can just sort of wrap this elastic around whatever tree branch is available. And then run the wire up here, um, up to that the carbon fiber soda beams pole. I never regret bringing this pole with me when I go on activations. Always bring your own antenna mast, I say, especially when it's as light as this one. It's like less than a pound, it goes up and over. And the other side, I'm really glad I used this 26 gauge wire because right here, I didn't have to move anything. I didn't have to move any rocks, nothing. I can just wrap this tiny piece of rope around this this tiny wire and nothing needs any more infrastructure than that again minimalist bring your own supports well let's just get this on the air and see how it works out cq 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 kilo delta 7 quebec oscar whiskey cq soda cq soda after about 10 minutes of calling CQ on 40 meters, I QSY'd to 20 meters and tried calling CQ again for another 20 minutes and got nothing. I was hearing parks on the air activators and regional nets, so I knew it wasn't just the marginal band conditions causing my problem. I was a little worried it might be my less than ideal antenna setup, but I wasn't yet ready to take down my half wave and set up the dipole. Every good plan has a backup plan, and Wind Mountain just happens to be located within the Gifford Pinchot National Forest, which means it's also within a park that I can activate for parks on the air. So, I tried casting a wider net by spotting myself on parks on the air. It worked! Conditions were still a little bit challenging, but in about 30 minutes, I got 16 QSOs on 20 meters and 40 meters. Kilo November 4, Echo November India, QSO. Uh, Echo November India, India QSO. Um, was that Echo, Echo November India? QSO, QSO, I've got you about a 5, 6, Kilo Germany 6, Mike Delta Bravo. Kilo Germany 6, Mike Delta Bravo, QSO. QSO, you're 5 and 9 here into Southern California. All right, thanks to the 5 and 9 into Southern California, and I've got you 20 over 5, 9 here into Southern Washington. Over. Okay, very good. Well, thank you for the contact from Washington. Thanks to 7 3. Have a great night. 73. See you. Kilo Delta Four. So I learned something today, which is that if your summit activation is not working through summits on the air, the best way to get this thing activated is to cast a wider net and switch over to parks on the air, and you will probably be more likely to get contacts. And I think that's for a couple reasons. Number one is, like I said, casting a wider net. And let's be honest, the parks on the air guys are probably more likely to be using a QR radio, QRO radio and the summits on the air folks even the chasers are probably more likely to be using qrp from their home uh, which makes it a little more challenging on days like today where we had a solar flare earlier in the day and so there are the conditions are a little bit more challenging but i got 16 qso's through parks on the air every single qso i got was parks on the air not summits on the air but we did it we made the activation work um i think i'm alone up here it's still pretty warm, it's nice. But anyway, yeah, we did it. It's activated. Fantastic. Thanks to everybody from Parks on the Air who made that possible. It's a big battery to carry, right? I've got this like 12 volt, 12 amp per hour battery. 
I just put it away, but um, this is my FT891. Um, it got nice and warm. The toroid up here is like, I was doing all SSB and you know, I can touch the toroid now. It's not, it didn't get like too hot to touch or anything. The toroid did not overheat or even come close. I think it's cause I've got it open to the air like this. Um, if you're just doing single side band, you can probably get away with a single toroid the way that I did, even though it's not really the best. Um, I always use a counterpoise with my end-fed half wave. Um, when I started the activation, I was afraid that maybe the end-fed half wave was a problem, um, that maybe I, that's why I wasn't getting out, but that after I switched over to parks on the air, I was getting decent signal reports from the people who could hear me, and I've heard multiple reports from people that there was a lot of QSB on the band. Okay, just a couple final thoughts about how today's activation went. Um, I think today's one of those days that validates what I was saying earlier in this video, which is that you should carry as much power as you're willing to carry because if I, if I hadn't had 100 watts, I probably wouldn't have made any QSOs, um, maybe a couple, but the uh, 100 watts in a wire got me to 16 QSOs today. Uh, I feel like 10 watts probably would have been a bit of a challenge. Um, and you really cannot control what the band conditions are going to be like on the day that you're activating. So there we have it. Even with 100 watts, sometimes it can be really, really tricky. And other days you're making contacts like crazy on 10 watts. But if you can, and the hike is short enough, why not carry more power? Summits on the air does not have to mean QRP. They go together well, but that doesn't mean that summits on the air has to be a QRP activity. You just use the tools that make sense and do it the way that you want to do it. But I love my FT891 and I think it's perfect for more accessible summits like this one, like Wind Mountain, where it's 900 feet of climbing, and like a mile, one mile. Like Gaia GPS told me it was one mile. So, you know, yeah, I can carry, I can carry an FT891 a mile. And I could probably have carried a smaller battery, but that would have been 50 watts. I would have even had more trouble with that. Maybe my linked dipole could have been more efficient, but I can't know that because I wasn't willing to get them out to try them side by side. There you go though. Bring QRO power when you can.